Today and welcome back. We'll talk about web optic. So generally, we'll discuss about the phenomenon of light in this chapter. We'll learn about interference today, which include the optical path difference, condition for constructive and destructive interference. And we also look through young double slit interference and also interference in team film in this video. First is the very important parameter for this video is the optical path. It is something similar with the distance that we have learned but it is specialized to describe the path traveled by the light wave. We have learned how the speed of light is affected when it is traveling through different medium, which the speed becomes slower if it enters denser medium. Sounds like it needs more time to travel or maybe it traveled a longer distance, which we would characterize it as the optical path. It links with the refractive index, given as the product of refractive index and the length of the path. The denser the medium, the longer the optical path. Let's see one question from trial paper of Terenganu in 2021. Where two parallel light rays travels in the path of PQ and X1. For PQ, we can see there's a piece of glass with thickness of 1.2 cm and the refractive index of 1.5. Let us label the length of PQ and X1 with L. First point to discuss is that we could see the geometrical distance is equal for PQ and X1. However, we expect that the light ray PQ take longer time to travel compared to XY because there is a glass which slow down the light ray. To explain about this, optical path is introduced. The optical path of XY stays as the length L multiplied the refractive index of A. But for the path PQ, we have the light ray travel in two types of medium. First is in the air that the distance is L minus 1.2 cm multiplied the refractive index of A. And then we have the thickness of glass 1.2 cm multiply the refractive index of glass. So the total optical path for PQ can be expressed as L minus X plus and X. Now the next thing that we can do is to determine optical path difference, which is equal to 0.6 cm in this case. Now notice that the optical path has the same dimension as the distance. The path difference is the factor that the light in PQ took longer time to travel besides that we explain it with the reason of denser medium. In summary, optical path provides us the number to explain about the delay when the light travels through denser medium. Next thing is also quite important that we are going to talk about interference. This is something that you should feel familiar on how to sketch the interference of web from two coherent sources. Coherent means that both web has the same frequency and constant phase difference. This is the important criteria of having the interference pattern, like what you have learned about the criteria to have the standing wave or the bead in the last few chapter. Now, let us observe more details in this diagram. We are going to quantify the condition of having the constructive or destructive interference. We learned that the superposition of trough and trough produce constructive interference. Observe this point. We can roughly get the distance of that point from each sources such as the blue wave is at 2.5 times the wavelength away from the source, or the red one is 1.5 times the wavelength. So from here, we can get our path difference is equal to one wavelength. Let's see another point here. Both blue and red is at two wavelength away from the source, so the path difference is equal to zero. The next one is here that the difference is two wavelength. All these points are the points where constructive interference occurs. For path difference of zero, it is also known as the central maximum, which is the back fringe at the center of the screen if you perform the young double slit experiment. Continue the numbering. First order maximum is where the first back fringe after the center one, that the path difference is one wavelength. And then second order maximum for the second back fringe and etc. Now, we look at the destructive interference. For these two points here, you could see that the path difference is 1.5 and 0.5 times the wavelength respectively. So from all this observation, we now can quantify the condition for the constructive and destructive interference. In short, the path difference, which is zero or one wavelength, two wavelength, and etc., which is also equivalent to zero, two pi radian, four pi radian, and so on, they produce the maximum constructive interference. By the word maximum constructive means that both trough of the wave are aligned to produce the maximum amplitude. For the destructive interference, the condition is that when the path difference is 0.5 lambda, 1.5 lambda, and etc., while in terms of phase difference, it is 1 pi, 3 pi, and etc. The formula are listed here for your own reference. There could be different expression in the book. Just stick with one of them and make sure they are following the correct sequence. Now, 
we move to two slip interference. Young's experiment is quite famous in our syllabus that we have one source to produce the interference pattern. So we could explain about the interference phenomenon based on Huygens principle. It says that all the points on the wavefront serve as secondary point source and emit secondary spherical wavelet. From the slip S0, it will be the point source to produce spherical wavefront and arrive both slip 1 and S2. This ensures that both S1 and S2 become coherent source and also infest. And then the wave that emerged from S1 and S2 will superpose and produce interference pattern on the screen. Now we move to the derivation of formula for the interference pattern. Let's say we have two slits with separation of A and another screen which is at distance D away from the slit. Both slits will serve as the secondary point source to produce wavelet and undergo superposition and produce the superposition pattern on the screen. Let's consider any of the bright fringe on the screen. The distance of bright fringe from the center of the screen will be equal to mx, that m is the order of maximum. That's what we have discussed. To have a constructive interference, the path difference between L1 and L2 here should be in the multiple of wavelength m lambda. From here, we can draw a triangle which is almost similar as the right angle triangle. This is because that the wavelength of light is very short in the range of nanometer. So the other length in the triangle can be approximate to A also, and we have almost 90 degree triangle. Now, let's see another triangle here. We have a right angle triangle that we have D and MX as the length and the height. In the actual calculation, the distance D is actually quite large in relative to the value of X, that we have the hypotenuse is also approximate to the value of D. Now, we have all the information ready. We have these two triangles as similar triangle after the approximation. Compare the ratio of the length and height, we will have m lambda over a equal to mx over d. Rearrange the formula, we will have x is equal to lambda d over a as the formula for the interference pattern. Let's try one question from the trial paper of SMK Dato Manso. The calculation should be not much problem for you, just that you need to be careful with all those terms. We have the wavelength of 590 nanometer, separation between the slit A is 1.2 millimeter. A screen is placed at 1.5 meter from the double slit, calculate the separation between bright fringe. So it is quite simple. Just put in the value according to the formula, and also don't forget to convert them into SI unit. You will get 7.375 times 10 to the power of negative 4 meter in the end. To summarize about the factor of the interference, if you want to have a clearer pattern that you want to have a wider bright fringe, you need to have longer wavelength, longer distance between the slit and the screen, and shorter slit separation. Question 2 mentioned another light with shorter wavelength, so this will produce shorter fringe separation, which means they will become more narrow. Let's see the next part of the question. Here mentioned that when a light source of wavelength, 516 nanometer, the 14 dark fringe is observed at Q. Then, there's another light source and it is 35th dark fringe that is observed at Q. What we're going to do here is to review the parameter X, which is the separation distance between two consecutive bright or dark fringes. The constant parameter here is the length of PQ, which gives us different number of X for different wavelength. For interference pattern, the center is the bright fringe followed by the first dark fringe and then bright and repeat. So we'll try to express the distance PQ in terms of X. We can first express the distance between bright fringes at the center with the first dark fringe, which is equal to half x. And then from the first dark fringe to the m dark fringe, the distance would be m minus 1 times x. We can imagine it this way. Let's say we have m equal to 3, which is from the first to the third dark fringe. We have the distance is 2x, which include the distance between the first and second, and then between second and the third dark fringe. So the number of x will be equal to m minus 1, which will be 3 minus 1 equal to 2. Finally, we can express the total length from P to Q is m minus 0.5x. The next step is to express the length in terms of x. For the first case, we have 40 dark fringes, so PQ is equal to 39.5x. Next is when we have 35 dark fringe at Q, PQ is equal to 34.5x. Back to the question that we need to find the value of wavelength, we have the formula of x equal to lambda d over a, and x is directly proportional to the wavelength. From here, we can equate both expression of pq since it is constant in both cases. We have 39.5x1 equal to 34.5x2. Substitute the ratio of x with the ratio of wavelength, 
You can solve the equations and obtain the wavelength is 641 nanometer. To summarize this topic, X can be influenced by changing the wavelength of light, slit separation, and the distance between slit and the screen. The width of X could be very small because light has a very short wavelength. Usually, we would get the distance between a few bright or dark fringes in the experiment since the distance between two consecutive fringes is too short for a ruler to measure, just like what happened in the previous question. Last but not least, another thing that can influence X is the type of medium. The next question mentioned that the experiment is conducted in water. As we know that light travels slower in denser medium, it has shorter wavelength, hence the fringe separation also becomes shorter in this case. One more topic for this video is about the interference in the thin film. To cut it short, I would highlight a few things to solve any related question. The story happened when light incident to a surface, so there's a portion of light reflected and the rest are refracted into the medium. First point is that there is a phase change of pi radian when the light is reflected from a denser medium, which is equivalent to the optical path of lambda over 2. Next is to search for optical path for both the reflected ray and the refracted ray. For this diagram, when the light incidents on the surface with denser medium, the red color highlighted is the reflected ray and it has optical path of lambda over 2 before it leaves the surface. Next is the refracted ray, which is the blue color highlighted. It will travel to the bottom surface and reflect it to the top. If it is reflected from less dense medium, it doesn't have the phase change, so the total optical path for blue ray is the refractive index n multiplied the total distance travel, which is 2t, where t is the thickness of the medium. The next step is depending on the application. If you want to have constructive interference between both rays, the optical path difference is equal to m lambda. If you want to have destructive interference, it will be equal to m plus 0.5 lambda. Let's try one question from the trial paper of SMK Dato Manso. Here we have similar case, except that we have another denser medium below the coating of silicon oxide in this question. Let's go through all the points I have mentioned. First is that there is phase change if the light reflected from denser medium. In this case, both the reflected and refracted ray have an optical path of lambda over 2 since they are reflected from the denser medium. For the yellow ray, since it travels to the bottom surface of silicon oxide and then reflected back to the top, it has additional of 2 nt for its optical path. Therefore, the path difference for this case is only 2 nt. The next step is about the application. The question requires for no reflection, which refer to the destructive interference. What we do here is just equate the optical path difference with the condition of destructive interference. For the minimum thickness, m is equal to 0 if you follow my formula and the sequence. So we have the equation of 2nt equal to lambda over 2. In the end, t is equal to 75 nanometer. So this is quite straightforward. I would suggest not to memorize formula because the situation might change. The question could replace with less dense medium, or maybe it asks for another order of destructive interference, or etc. Just take some time to understand about it, and I'm sure you will be fine. So that's all for my discussion today. If you still have any question, leave it in the comment section below. Also, do leave a like and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in my next video. Thank you.